No. No, no, no. Floating, floating, elegiac, floating, where you become part of the element. Always, I'm anchored to nature, but a reinterpretation of it, more of an overview, rather than be static. To, to, to see this happen is an extension uh, of his um, of, of the celebration of his life. Uh, it's, un it's uncanny timing. And really it's a, a tribute and an ode to John. In your life you've got to have luck. And uh, to have this opportunity I appreciate it very much. It just fills me with honest uh, astonishment. What he really contributed to Australian art was a new way of looking at the landscape. It was about this integration of all things. John was more interested in the sensory experience rather than just the visual one. To him, feeling was just as important as seeing. I was really conscious that I wasn't curating for a gallery. I wasn't gonna do like a retrospective. My primary focus throughout this project was to make sure that we do John's work justice, bringing as much life to the images as possible. I mean, even though it had so much vibrancy and life to them, I just wanted to make sure that we, we told the right story with it. Really, the threads going through are about light and water and the life within landscapes, within habitats, and, um, and really thinking about the way that John paints and draws at the same time. Some of John's paintings are quite kinetic and frenetic, like polyrhythmic. It's the way that he lays down the paint and like marks the canvas. And then we want to like try to animate that and like, because that's the energy behind it. The way that he actually applies his work to the canvas or to the sketchbook. And my goodness, what a canvas and what a sketchbook the Opera House sales are. So you've got the idea of the image on the side of the opera house and then you've got all this sort of rippling, making the thing even more kind of vibrant. Reflections dance with the movement of the water. We knew that we needed to get traditional animators involved, bring life to his paintings in a way that feels respectful and honouring his artwork but also keeping it really tactile and like handmade. He loved the idea of taking line for a walk. Well John didn't really take it for a walk, he took it for a romp or a canter or he, his line allows frogs to fly but John's work is very much informed by this linear propulsion. I was able to show him a mock-up of it. There he was lying in his deathbed and I showed it to him and it, I had the soundtrack playing on a little speaker and he wasn't able to speak, but he, he had little tears rolling down his, his eyes as though this really was the full circle of his life. I think he really felt that um, he'd left his mark and this was a wonderful way to finally sign off. I'll tell you what I can't wait for is for overseas people and all Australians to see vivid because the scale is so different. And there it is spread over Sydney Harbour, reflecting into the water, the harbour. Got him a lucky dog.